only thing I can say about being homeless is that you couldn't find a more degrading thing to happen to a person. Never. The worst thing of the homeless is the winter time. It's cold. It's just cold. For me, living on the street was, was just like living in a tunnel. You know, you can see the light ahead, but then all of a sudden the light is getting dimmer, not realizing that you're walking backwards. There's no description for the pain and suffering. You know, you have, you have to experience it yourself. You would have to be out there in the street to really understand what I'm trying to say. My first two traumas were going to sleep, hoping that nobody would bust inside my head. I slept in churches, on trains, always with one eye open. The one thing that made me uncomfortable a lot of times was new faces, people I'd never seen before, because they can hurt you. You know, people around me were getting stabbed, beat up. But there was a time when I, I thought my, I was next. I got sick of that life real quick, really quick. When I was a kid and I used to see them with the drinking the wine and around the thing, nobody really thinks that you're going to be there. You don't really look at that. Nobody wants to be homeless. I was born on the 4th of July in the Bronx, and I lived a really great life. I had the best mother and father you could possibly have. And um, I, I, I can't say anything about my life being unhappy until I became homeless. I got involved with drugs. That took a lot of money from me. Even though I was working, I became homeless because I, I was addicted to, to, to cocaine. My father really never talked to me. He would only beat me when I did something stupid. But he was a good man, because I still love him. We had a family house, right there on the Park Avenue. And when he sold the house and I didn't go get a job, I had to leave the house. But, you know, using drugs, you don't, you don't, you don't worry about those things until it happens. I was born in Panama, came to New York at the age of 15. I joined the military in 81, and I uh, came out of the military in 1987. Found myself involved in uses of drugs. I became homeless for the first time. I went into a program, and I managed to stay clean for a long period of time, and eventually I, I found myself back out, out on the street. I did spend some time in this present location here, approximately six to nine months. It wasn't a pleasant place to be, but by the time, it was the only place I had to be. That, at least I thought that's the only place I had. Over the last four or five years, the city has adopted a street-to-home plan for homeless individuals. The Housing First model says that you take these individuals, you move them directly into permanent housing, and instead of trying to cure their problems before they move into permanent housing, you work with them after they get their own apartments. That kind of broke a lot of barriers with clients and opened a lot of other avenues, because now you know, you can meet the client where they're at. Once these individuals move into supportive housing, then the substance abuse and the mental illness is treated. Their surroundings have changed. They're not vulnerable. They enter permanent housing that they selected, that they chose, and that they work for. They focus a lot more, and they, they focus on life changes. It's a lot easier to work on your problems if you have a decent place to stay. In the Bronx, groups that work with this chronically homeless population actually get along. We've had to work very closely with other city agencies to coordinate services, including the Parks Department, the Police Department, the Department of Buildings. The Visiting Nurse Services of New York has been a key partner from day one. Citywide harm reduction provides services to a lot of our clients. Montefiore Hospital has been another key partner. They provide medical services in a respectful and flexible manner to our population. 
we've had excellent relationships to make sure that people who have chosen to live on the street remain safe and people are offered a decent place to go. Bronx Works, I think, has really led the way in New York City. Our focus has been on working with chronically homeless individuals and actively trying to link them with supportive housing. The first time I came in contact with Bronx Works, or should I say they came in contact with me, was at this present location right here. When you're out in the street, as long as I was out in the street, you lose your trust in people even good people, you know, that you know won't do you no harm. It was too good to believe that somebody wanted to help me. When the outreach team came along, I kind of praised them, because I even cried, because someone came to me. We have our outreach team that uh, travels all over the, the Bronx, 24 hours a day, to locate clients, engage with them, and kind of build a rapport with them in the streets, in the bushes, under the train stations, under the bridges. We take pride in the fact that we know every single chronically homeless person who is staying on the street in the borough. We list these individuals, we come up with plans for these individuals, and we work really hard on getting these plans in place that will eventually lead to them being off the street. We see them every day. We meet them at their location. We work with them from where they're at. And, you know, we just keep engaging them, you know. If today doesn't work, we go tomorrow, we go the next day. They will come to me. I did not have to go looking for them. They will come to me on a particular daily basis and come check on me all hours of the day, all hours of the night. Wake me up, take me to welfare, buy me breakfast. During the winter months, those times they will come back two or three times a day and check on all the, people, all the other veterans and uh, all the other homeless people out here also. And I stuck with it. We show that we have a lot of passion for what we do. We've been really disciplined about taking all the steps that you have to take to get somebody off the street. They do everything they can to help you out. You know, they don't sit on their asses and then tell you one thing or promise you something that they never do, you know. When they say they're gonna stick with you, they stick with you all the way to the end. So once you know, they see that we persistent and that we don't give up on them, you know, that kind of, I, I guess it kind of opens them up to actually wanting to work with us. The Bronx work is one of the most number one in my heart. <laughs> I think that there is a myth that homeless people want to be homeless. The fact is that if you ask almost any homeless person what they want the most, what they want is their own apartment. So what we've tried to do is link people to directly what they tell us that they want. It wasn't too long after that that I wound up in the most beautiful place that I think I've ever lived. Okay. Okay. And I'm thankful for... What makes that place beautiful? Well, besides it being mine. I wasn't going to take it, but then I took it because to get off the street. I'm in a one-bedroom apartment. Bronx work assisted me in a safe haven place to keep myself focused on what I needed to do for myself, and that was, you know, achieve sobriety and I can cook my own food now. And I watch my own TV without anybody telling me anything. Hey, here's the whole difference in the world. I got my own keys. I don't got to share no bathroom with nobody. Got to be fighting with nobody, be knocking on my door, making noises late at night. I'm in paradise. If that's there, if I can describe it. I would say for me, it's paradise. It's good. It's a good feeling. This is something that I cherish, something that I truly work for, you know, and not just something that, that was given to me without any effort on my part. When I come into my apartment, it feels that it's my place. It feels comfortable. <sighs> I'm just happy. I'm just so grateful, man. You saved my life. You saved my life.
15 years ago when we started working with the street homeless population, we did a count and within a 10 block radius, we were able to count roughly 100 people living on the street in that area. Now, I don't think you could find more than a couple. Since 2005, there's been a remarkable 80% reduction in street homelessness in the Bronx. I think that the Housing First model is directly responsible for the sharp reduction in homelessness. We think that the reduction in chronic street homelessness has significantly improved the quality of life in this borough, and that is a fact that we're especially proud of. I'm sort of back in my old neighborhood, but this time with a good, good vibe. This drugs has left my life. My daughter stays with me now. She visits me. She in college. You know, we got a good relationship and everything. Five years from now, I'm, um, I want to be healthy and strong. I would, would like to be, you know, employed somewhere, doing something in, in the human service field. Having my own business, tile business, outreach. You know, I'm, if it's possible to work with Bronxwood. I'm so happy being where I am right now. I'm not worried about five years from now. I mean that. One thing that made me so proud of being in the apartment and stuff like that is the fact that I come to realize that there's hope. Most homeless people are very intelligent people. But when you lose that perspective, when you actually gave up, of life, then that's when you caught. And that's one thing I didn't lose.